welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have another realistic turntable. This one's an RD8100. If you're uh, thinking it looks familiar, it might look like your Marantz or it might look like your Hitachi. That's because they were all manufactured by the same company, um, that company being CEC Corporation out of Japan. Um, interesting enough, this one has got the original Radio Shack replacement stylus. Um, not sure what year it's from, but it does have the original part number, 42-2762, and it was $20. Uh, these stylus were made by Shure, so realistic Shure. Um, and this turntable is probably going to need it because I had a quick peek and the stylus on this was bent. This is the original factory cartridge, which is a Shure cartridge. Um, so this will be put on there and it's going to be opened up probably for the first time in, what, 40, maybe 50 years? No, not 50. I'm going to say 40-something years. All right, so we'll set that aside for now. <clears throat> this is a semi-automatic direct-drive turntable. Again, manufactured by CEC. It's very similar to my Hitachi PS38. Um, actually, it might be even closer to PS30. Is it, hmm, shit, I can't remember. 38, 48, 58, I think they went. So maybe the 48, because the 38 was um, completely manual. The 48 was semi, the 58 was uh, fully automatic, if my memory is serving me correctly. So it's probably very identical to that model. Uh, it's come in for a, a routine service. This is a gentleman who buys and resells turntables. So it's going to kind of be kind of a quickie job. We're going to check it out, make sure it's working okay. Lubricate the motor and anything else that needs uh, servicing on it. And uh, we're going to ship it on its way. Uh, so it's not going to be super in-depth because um, this guy just kind of wants a quick turnaround so he can sell it, you know, and say that it has been serviced. All right, so I guess so. the first thing we should do is see how it's operating. Let's just remove this dust cover. And plug it in. It's probably been located in a damp environment. You can see the uh, corrosion on the AC plug there. Not a good sign. Don't like when I see that. All right, so what do we got here? This arm looks twisted. And it is twisted. There's a little screw under here that adjusts it, but somebody's reefed down on that. It's pretty tight the way it is now, so that was just a visual um, twist there just to get it back straight. Okay, so... That goes down. Looks like this just where's the queuing? Oh, here it is. Queuing. Uh, cut down up. Okay, so up. Okay, we got power. That's always a good sign. Speed's pretty good. It's not the speed pots aren't bad, but if you notice here, I don't know if that's coming across on camera very well. Um, usually when you've achieved perfect 33 speed, this knob should be kind of in the center position. Same with 45, they should both be in these positions. So we'll check this when we get it opened up to see if there's an adjustment on the motherboard or on the main board. And we'll see if we can adjust those so that they're in the center position. That way you've got the full swing of the pitch. So right there, it's slow. Okay, so we'll adjust those. Um, all right, so if it's got cut, it's a semi-automatic, like I said. The arm's dropping nice and slow. Let's check our auto return. Oops, yeah, it is auto returning. That's good. And we'll just check the cut. Okay, that's good. It's uh, rather dusty and dirty, but I'm not here to clean them. I do offer that service. Uh, some people want more of a turntable restoration, and when they ask for that, I do a complete. Um, I clean every nook and cranny. I polish and shine and all the rest of it, but when it's just in for a basic service, you know, especially with this guy with the, with the bare minimum, that's what he gets, right? So this grime and this dirt on the turntable, that's up for him to clean. All right, 
so yeah classic CEC platter probably a little stuck a good tug Let's see if we can see a manufacturer date on here hmm not sure exactly what these mean this is a date code here nice heavy aluminum platter good quality not very ringy and uh, rather dusty here this looks really sticky oh yeah that is really sticky okay so before we flip it over that's the that's the auto return as you can see um, what happens is when you move the arm over this little peg comes it grabs this little arm here and you'll, you'll start to see it move once that moves that gets touched by the little notch on the main spindle and it does one rotation and brings the arm back nice and simple right not like that uh, uh, pioneer uh, pl570 with the crazy amount of gears on it so all right let's unplug this so that doesn't go spinning on us let's service this auto return i just don't like the look but that arm really wants to move around lock that in place this looks really gummy especially here I usually don't mess around with the auto return mechanism very often unless they're giving me an issue but this one is particularly gross so we're going to service that and uh, I'm getting this off I just want to say that uh, I recently did a repair on a Techniques SLD5 it's one of the changer units it was an excellent video it was a full service the motor everything I lost all the uh, video footage um, I could have swore it was on there I don't know if I forgot to press record or if I deleted it by accident but that's why there was no video this past week there should have been one but uh, yeah that kind of sucked because that was a that was a really good repair oh well shit happens right Okay, so you want to remove your C-clip here, E-clip, whatever it is. Come on. All right. Well, this should come up. Not too much issue. Um, there's grease on here and it looks pretty good I have to say but this is just absolutely filthy it's covered in hair and stuff this is what I'm concerned about this is not moving these should move independent of each other and they barely do so this is a mess here we're gonna have to clean that if we can get it oh yeah there's a c-clip there as well all right let's see how this There we go. Maybe I'll we'll do it like that. All right, so we've got another C clip here. E clip. So we'll just get that off side there should be I think three pieces here there is one yeah that's really crusty and I don't know if that's grease that's turned to concrete or if it's corrosion but that is very dirty we got our middle one here and our bottom. I think we have four pieces actually. Yeah, this is totally stuck. Uh oh. Hmm.
I mean, look at that, eh? Not good. This is like cardboard. It's like a cardboard piece. I'm not sure how we're going to clean that. I think we have to bend this and then bend it back to get it out. And a washer. Here we go. Yeah, this is a this is a mess. Okay, we need something a little stronger. WD forty, and get a cloth here. Yeah, I think it is kind of a corrosion. I'm not sure the reasoning behind using the uh, the cardboard washer. Right? That I don't get. So we're not going to be able to use like an oil or something because it'll it'll soak right through the cardboard. The metal's just stained now. It is feeling smooth again. This side. This one's okay. It's clean.
we'll bend that part back in a minute. This, I don't know. It is cardboard. Ugh. I can't, uh, I can't scrape too hard. Because I'll scrape all the paper, all the cardboard, right? Yeah, I think it's split. That was a bit of a silly idea. I know it's just to keep those two pieces separate. But, um... Yeah, I'm going to have to glue that now. Okay, I am going to uh, pause here because I want to clean this um, correctly without damaging it anymore. And I can't, like I said, I can't soak it with WD-40. It's going to soak the paper and it's going to soften up and get ruined. So i got to figure out what i got to do. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have been working away. The only thing, the only solution I can find is to scrape this crap off. And uh, that's about as much as I want to go because I don't want to damage this anymore. It did tear, so I have glued it there. So I'm just going to put it back where it belongs, which was there. And this went here. That. So at least now they're moving. They're not stuck anymore. No lubrication there. I can't risk soaking that cardboard with any kind of lube or oil or petroleum product. So I'm just going to put the E-clip back on and call it a day. There we go. So now it's moving, all right? So you got full range of movement here. Okay. That was not an easy job. I'm gonna leave that grease there I put a drop of oil here. And we're just going to throw this back. That's the home position. And there we go. That's it. Wasted a lot of time on that. But I feel a lot better now that, uh, ah, see how it moves nicely now? There we go. Much better. I'm much happier with that. It's real, it's moving nicely now. I, I really don't know if it was grease from the factory, but why would you grease cardboard, right? Couldn't tell you. Okay, enough with that. Let's service the rest of the table. Let's zoom out. Okay.
identical bottom to my Hitachi PS38. Identical. A lot of screws, so uh, let me take those out. Be right back. This is a very thin bottom. It's only, you know, probably the cheapest part of this turntable is this, this base. Okay, but once you get it opened up, you get that uh, excellent CEC quality build here, eh? Gorgeous. Big bastard of a motor. Auto return. All metal construction. Your arm connection is under here, under the shielded portion. Here's our uh, pots here. And it uh, doesn't look like, uh, you know, I, was, I wasn't thinking straight there unless... Oh, no, maybe they are adjustable here. I don't want to start turning pots without knowing what they are first. But I'm going to guess that that's our 33 and 45, or yeah, 33 and 45 adjustment right there at the front. These two potentiometers. Okay, we're going to clean our pitch controls. So, hey, I got some, uh, I got some new cleaner here. Um, although this says Motomaster electrical contact cleaner, it's actually that CRC stuff. I, actually, I, I talked about it in the last video, which was unfortunately deleted. This is a non-residue electrical contact cleaner. And uh, we're going to give it a go. See how it works. And we hit these two pots with it. So it's supposed to be zero residue. It's supposed to clean electrical components and leave no residue whatsoever. And it's also safe for plastics. So if uh, you get like, I think there's carbon trace potentiometers um, that can be damaged sometimes with deoxid. This stuff should be safe to use on those. And I can feel it's doing a great job at uh, cleaning up these switches. I'm just moving them back and forth. Very nice. All right. Let me call those done. Uh, this motor looks a little bit different to service. I got one, two, three, four bolts here. Sealed or not? Well, let's have a look, see what happens. Yeah, I know. My nut driver sets in the, sets in the garage again. So if they're working on my car, I'm going to need it. Right back. 7.30 seconds, nut driver. I think it's actually a 5.5 millimeter, but I don't have one of those. I would have never got those off with my fingers. Oh, this motor's a bit of a pain in the ass to get at. Wow. Uh, can we set it back up here? Kind of. Oh, there we go. Still not, uh, 
uh, not too easy to get at, I have to say. There's one, two, three more screws you have to get off. It probably removes this black plate. I guarantee you this has never been serviced. And like I say, if you ever see a turntable and it says uh, do not lubricate or lifetime lubrication, just ignore it. I don't think these turntable manufacturers thought back in the day that we'd still be using these things 50 years later. And no lubricant lasts that long. Okay, do we have a motor? Hey, we do. All right, so just a typical direct drive motor. Just give it a tug. There it is. Should be a ball bearing. Oh, this one, look at this. Look at the oil. Can you see that flowing? It's actually okay. That's factory oil. Smells a little funky, I'm sure after all these years it's gonna. I'm taking it, there's a ball bearing in there. There it is. Let's see if we can get her out. Magnetic screwdriver. There it is. Yeah, well lubricated. Well, maybe in this case, it was a lifetime lube. But it doesn't matter. We are going to stay. We're going to re-lubricate this. I think 50-year-old 50 50 year oil has done its job, right? Okay, a little bit of alcohol for the bearing well. Throw a Q-tip in there. Clean her out. Lots of oil in this one. I am really surprised. It's so weird because that uh, Pioneer 570 I did, the bearing well was totally dry. Dry to the point that there was scoring on the spindle, right? And here's this one. It's just full of oil. That's good. It's better to have oil. I'm still pulling oil out of this thing. All right, good. For this one, we're going to use the three-in-one for electric motors. Three or four drops. Drop in your ball bearing. Just a couple drops on the uh, axle here. Place it in, and it will slowly go down. Don't worry about over lubricating. You cannot over lubricate. Any excess, I mean, you can't over lubricate. Don't fill it up to the top. That'd be ridiculous. But if you do, you know, let's say you put in seven, and it's really struggling to go down, just let it take its time. The air will push the oil, or the oil will push the air out of the pit. And if there's any oil that's leaked out just get a paper towel lift this up again and just sop it up with a paper towel so don't worry about over lubrication on on, on a bearing whoops sorry okay this one is taking its time but it is going down which is good you can give it a little push if you want it will help We just need to get that air out.
Sometimes you can spin it and it'll help too. There it goes. Still a little punchy there, but that's okay. We'll uh, we'll carry on. I'm gonna put this back on. It will go down. That you don't have to worry about. Okay. Great. Okay. This one like this. Oh, damn. Did I put that on wrong? Uh huh. I did that incorrectly. Hang on. Be right back. Okay. The motor's back on. Um, I wanted to see what these two pots were, and you can see I've marked them now, because now I know what they are. These are definitely the uh, pots for the speed adjustment. That's 33, that's 45. I went on a vinyl engine, and I looked for the uh, service manual for the RP, what is this thing, RD8100, and there's nothing. There's an owner's manual only. So um, the other option is to go to Hitachi, and this is definitely a Hitachi uh, PS48. So the service manual is available for the Hitachi PS48. So if you have one of these realistic models, go to the Hitachi section and you can download the service manual and uh, verified that's 33, that's 45. We're going to set speed. Well, um, I don't know if there's some holes or not. Let's see here. Well, that's kind of silly. They don't give you any excess holes. Hmm. Very annoying. I guess because they would be here, kind of in an awkward spot. Okay, so why don't we, we'll do it, we'll put it up on, uh, I don't have two blocks of wood right now either. Um, we'll figure something out here. We're definitely not putting the base back on. We'll get it back on its belly though. Should be okay. I just need to hang it over the edge here. Let me get that set up and uh, I'll come right back. All right, we are all set up. Let me get my flashlight to turn on here. So I got to get under. So I got this, uh, the turntable's hanging over the edge of my bench here. I'm going to get on the ground and I get underneath. It's uh, just supported. Um, it's kind of on stilts. It's got uh, that. Uh, the main spindle is taller than the rest of the uh, of the parts underneath there, so it's holding it up, and I just I'm just supporting on this side, so it is spinning. I've got my uh, speed indicator here, my app, and what we're going to do is we're going to adjust both these pitch controls to center position. Okay, so close enough to center anyway. So roughly there and there. We'll do 45 first. Okay, so that's pretty close right there. So 45 is not bad. It's at 44.4, 44.3 and around there. So I'm going to get underneath and adjust that. Okay, just going to turn that. There we go. A bit more. 45, 45.0, I'm going to call that good. So we're centered on the pitch control, We've got perfect pitch here, 45 there, all right, now we're going to go to 33, again, our pitch knob is at the center position, we're at 30, that's pretty close, eh? So now we're going to hit 33.3. .3. Yeah, 
All right, adjusting. Thirty-three point three. There we go. Now, when you drop a record on the table, it may slow down just a smidge, but now the adjustment, at least we have full sweep on the pitch, right? So there we go. We're good. Let me take this off. And we're just gonna check our auto return. That's working. Beautiful. All right. Let me, that's all we have to do on the, on the bottom of the table. Let me get the base back on. We'll get it back up on its feet and uh, we'll set up the arm and uh, we'll install our new stylus. Okay, let's have a look at this cartridge. Realistic R1000E. And there's that uh, RS5T stylus. This one is bent. So this is garbage. See the hook on that? Total garbage. But, gotta love this, eh? So, I'm gonna try not to damage the packaging too much because it's kind of cool. And we don't want to damage the stylus either. There it is. Put the old one in there. Hmm. Good enough, eh? Okay, so don't have to clean the stylus on this one. It's brand new. And it just goes in like that. A bit weird looking, but that's the way it goes. All right, let's set up our arm. So tracking uh, force will be set. We're gonna set our anti-skate to zero first. And what we wanna do is balance up our arm here. I'm just gonna check for azimuth just for a sec here. Yeah, the arm's totally straight, which is good. Let me just bend this up too, because, oh, there it goes again. Huh. Bend that up. Okay, that looks good. So you just want to have your arm floating above your platter. It's a pretty heavy cartridge. Right about there. Set this to zero. And then we'll crank in two grams. And then we will also set our anti-skating for two grams. All right, shall we do a quick sound test? All right, so let's set our arm to up. Oh, again, plug it in. How many guys electronic guys on YouTube always forget to plug their equipment in. It's funny. Okay. Height is good. You gotta turn your amplifier on too. Good stereo separation. And shook azimuth again. Looks good to me. Check our cut feature. Yeah, working good. 
Well, that's going to do it for the uh, RD8100 slash Hitachi PS48. I'm probably going to put that uh, Hitachi badging in uh, the description as well, just in case someone who has a Hitachi table, which is identical to this one, can also get servicing information. I think I may have serviced a Hitachi PS48 in the past. I don't know. I've seen so many of these now that I'm starting to forget which ones I did and which ones I didn't. But anyway, there you go. Another CEC turntable. Nice build quality. Um, like I mentioned, this one is uh, going to get flipped. So uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, cleaning or servicing done other than lubricating the motor. Uh, doing that uh, auto return, which was really sketchy. Um, not very uh, pleased with uh, the fact that that cardboard was used as a gasket or washer in between those uh, pieces on the auto return. Didn't like that too much, but it is working and it is definitely moving a lot better than it was. So that's it for this one. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, we'll catch you next video. Thanks. Bye.